corporate shills up his ass, moving his mouth around like a puppet. On one, on one hand, he's talking about if Amer if something about if the American government can't pay its own bills or something like that, there's no way we should ever raise the debt ceiling. And then that's back in like 2006, maybe earlier. Like I'm not quoting that I'm exactly right. Let someone say, oh, he's wrong, so everything he said is wrong. Because that's a logical fallacy. Don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. I'm not perfect, but I'm working as perfectly as I can for you. It's not for my gain. I don't want to. I don't want to leer jet. I want to be healthy, and. Uh, I want a leer jet. I deserve it. You won't need a leer jet. We'll be able to just go around with teleportation. They probably have it. Anyways, I can't swear to that. Uh, on a, on another side note, if you wonder what's really going on, look up the the light bulb conspiracy. Because back in the 20s, production exceeded consumption. And they had two options. It was either have people work less hours and pay them more per hour, or, well, they had more options, but this is the options they were considering based on my research. We can either give them less hours and more money per hour, or we can make a lower quality product and have them work more hours, and also create an artificial demand for that product. Consider Edward Bernays' book called Propaganda, available for free online. It's a PDF. If you want to understand what's going on, it's called Public Relations, which breaks down to propaganda, which breaks down to mass mind control. And if you don't think it's possible, just take a step back. Take a step back. Take a step back. And ask yourself, who really wants to kill anybody? Do you, do you really feel that you're so angry that you're going to go out and kill? People have to be trained to kill. Most people do. If you look into the history of the training of the military, that is what's going on. In the earlier wars, there's a small percentage of people doing most of the killing. The rest of the people were in shell shock because we have hearts and souls. And to kill someone you've never met is abhorrently wrong. Anyways, we're going to turn true. this back on. Okay. I'm, a, That's right. I'm just impassioned. 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 Anyways, I'm just impassioned. You're impassioned, that's for sure. What are we watching now? But yeah, that's how this stupid bill is introduced, and it's just another screw the American people. That's what happens when you go to the, that's what happens when you go to the government looking for uh, what should we call it a handout or whatever or a, a little bit of help a little bit of a remedy they give you this they give you a problem he has given us medical services when we were in Washington and Oregon and about a week week and a half ago I was in touch with you know let's interrupt that but 2001, 9-11, the full America, force and effect of 9-11 really did start to take Obama full force and effect until they crashed the market in 2008. Now, there's more, there's, there's things that led up to it. There's Iraq, of course, and Afghanistan. But the full force and effect was 2008 with the economy, first economic crash. Then everything Ford started going haywire after secretary that. The was the first one to get it in the mail. So she went through it, read it, went right in the end. end. And went to Dr. Holman and said, I'm going Dr. to have to resign. <laughs> you got it! I can't do this. Uh, this is against my principles. And she said, I will not be able to fill out this paperwork. Uh, I, I, I'm resigning. Well, Dr. Holman was rather startled, but he didn't know what to do. Now, at this point, please bear with me long enough. All of you out there know that I've been a minister of the gospel for 55 years, so... I'll have to bring a little of this in, even though this is a secular program. Dr. Holman is a very devout Christian. He believes the Bible and practices it in his home and in his office. And likewise, his secretary is. And she read some things there that she couldn't do. She gave the paperwork to Dr. Holman. He took it home, looked it over, came back to his office, and last week he closed his practice. It took 20 years. Fifteen years the secretary has been with him. If you go to Lyle, Washington today and look to Dr. Holman's at, on his office, you will see a closed sign. He has quit the medical profession. And this is a man with six children. Mm -hmm. He can't afford to do this. Mm -hmm. Should have put a 
that the signs said closed due to Obamacare, but it's closed. I was so startled until I got in touch with the Holmans. My wife talked with me at length on the phone. I had to go further. Now, you will recognize the name of the next doctor. Now, folks, I'm giving you names and places. You can go find them. Dr. David Janda. Now, Dr. David Janda is not a novice. He is a very respected, one of the outstanding doctors of the Middle West. And Dr. Janda is so prominent as a physician of over 20 years, so I understand, that Congress actually invited him to speak before Congress at the time that the health care bill was being considered. And he spoke before Congress on behalf of the doctors in relation to the health care bill. Well, when I heard what had happened to Dr. Holman, I got in touch with Dr. Janda. And basically, this is what he said. He said, Chaplain, uh, I have already sold my office building. Yeah, you, you heard correctly. I have sold my office building. He said, I have notified the local hospital. Wow. And now, he's, he's a doctor that operates mm -hmm. on a regular basis in the mm -hmm. hospital. Mm -hmm. He said, I have notified the local hospital as of the date that I will be closing my practice. Now, if you want to know who Dr. Janda is, go on the web. J-A-N-D-A. -A. He has a radio broadcast. Uh, I've been on it many times. You can look it up and prove what I'm saying. He is quitting. Uh, he no longer will be in medicine, and he has much to lose. A very prominent practice and doctor. So, folks, and, and these are just what Lindsay's heard about. I'm sure that there are probably going to be hundreds, maybe thousands of examples of this in the months ahead. The system is designed to do what it's doing, destroy the middle class, and put everybody under the heel of the boot. Yep. And it is succeeding. It's not going to succeed. I have it's fallen down. Dumpty Dumpty had a now, great Anita fall. Anita mean anything to you. She's not a doctor. But a very, very close friend of ours in Oregon. We were in their home last summer. Mm -hmm. uh, she had just been on the phone with a very close friend of hers who was a brain surgeon. Wow. Very prominent brain surgeon, by the way, in Washington, the Oregon area of the Northwest. The brain surgeon had likewise just gotten his material from the federal government in relation to Obamacare. And he said, Anita, if I am required to follow the guidelines of Obamacare in a surgery that I do on the brain, he said, now, you have to understand that this is very meticulous. He said, instantaneous decisions must be made. He said, I don't have time to ask someone else's opinion. And he said, as a brain surgeon, and a very prominent one, by the way, uh, whose name I'm not allowed to give out, uh, he said, if I am required to follow the guidelines of Obamacare, he said, 50% of my patients will die on the operating table. Holy shit. I was appalled. I, I am still incredible. stunned. Yep, yep. He, he said, I do not have a fraction of a second sometimes in order to make a decision as to what to do in a person's brain when I'm operating. Now, this goes back to something. Uh, you remember a moment ago I mentioned Dr. David Janda and how prominent he is. Dr. Janda, a number of months ago, and I were on the phone privately talking, and he also sent me a picture of it. When he spoke before Congress on behalf of whether the doctors wanted Obamacare or not and the Americans, uh, he was one of the first doctors in America ever given a little thing about the size of a cell phone. In fact, it looked like a cell phone from the picture that I could see. And every doctor in America will have one of these by the first day of next year. And what the doctors are required to do, according to Obamacare, is you go to a doctor, your doctor makes all the tests necessary, gives a diagnosis of what he thinks is wrong with you. They are required to put in a code or something into this little gadget. It will instantaneously go into a bank somewhere. I would imagine it's a computer bank. 
And within a matter of moments, that little thing is supposed to reply to the doctor as to what procedure will be allowed by Obamacare according to their dictates. The doctor will have no choice. He only makes the diagnosis. They come back and tell you tell the doctor what drugs he must use, what procedure he must yeah. follow, everything he has to do instantaneously to go there and back, probably all computerized. Dr. Janda said to me, he said, Lindsay, when I appeared before Congress, and by the way, look on uh, YouTube and you'll find Dr. Janda explaining this. Mm -hmm. It's in our new DVD series, the next four years. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll see his DVD there. And here